It's fun to talk about our expectations because, you know, expectations in relationships are everything, aren't they? And so um, we all have them, not only in relationships, but in all of our life. But we base our expectations in our life on personal experiences, understanding, often that begin in our childhood, that they're there. So unmet expectations are the number one issue in relationships. Wow, yeah. Matter of fact, I read that mm-hmm. this week. National Survey in Marriage in America says 45% of divorce respondents said unrealistic expectations contributed to their marriage ending. Wow. wow. Almost half wow. of people yeah. because of unmet and unrealistic expectations. So we don't talk about that today. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So here, let's start the conversation. So Alec and Julia, you know, when it comes to relationships and expectations in relationships, what would you say are just some good ground rules that you guys have learned? Yeah, I think, I think, and this goes for any relationship. So if you're like single and you're not dating or you're not engaged, you're not married, and maybe that's not even for you, this goes for your friendships. This goes for your familial relationships. Like, please just keep that in mind. Like, the stuff that we're talking about today Mm -hmm. isn't just for the married people. It's it's for everybody. Right. Um, And I think with relationships and expectations, you can't have proper expectations without healthy communication Mm -hmm. between two people. And something I see a lot is a wife or a husband will get upset with their partner for not doing what they wanted them to do. And I ask, did you do, did you tell them what you wanted? Mm. No. Yeah. How are they, they supposed know. to know? Yeah. How, how right. would they know? And I'm also guilty of that because sometimes <laughs> like Alec will be like, do you want me to do this? And I'll just be like, the wavelength, do you get it or no? And if I'm like not telling you, if I'm not having that communication with you, I can't hold you responsible to any expectations I have for you or vice versa. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And communication has really done a lot, even in our first year and a half of marriage, just learning how to talk to each other, learning how to, like, read each other. You know, we want to vibe well together, I guess would be, like, the uh, young terms. But I even think of uh, healthy and honest communication is really key to uh, maintaining expectations because it brings both of the parties in. You know, right. it can't just be a one-person show for the whole yeah. marriage because that person's just going to get run down, burnt out. And it's no wonder that 45%, you mm-hmm. said, of the divorces in America yeah. are unmet expectations. Wow. Yeah. I wonder, of that percent, how many weren't even spoken? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really do. And then, you know, it even says in Scripture in Matthew 18, uh, I don't know if I have it. No, it's probably okay. But it's when Jesus is talking about if a brother has sinned against you or if something has offended mm-hmm. you, bring it up to them. Yeah. Yeah. And right. if their heart is changed, you have won them over. And the same goes to marriage. If Julia did something to hurt me, upset me, make me sad, angry, trigger those emotions, I should bring it up to her because I love her enough to share this honest love and truth with her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Communication is so huge. And you're right. It's not just a marriage thing. It's just a people relationship yeah. thing. If you are mm-hmm. upset and, you know, come to, you know, say you come to me and share with me, the first question I'm going to ask you, have you went and talked to that person? Mm-hmm. Because that is yeah. biblical. Right. And we need to be able to have those conversations because nine times out of the 10, it's a misunderstanding. It's cleared up. And then you can move on right. really better. Right. right. Communication's huge. I love that. Good Absolutely. job. Absolutely. And there's a podcast that we listen to called Leadership Lean In, and mm. he talks about confrontation as a whole. Because I think a big reason yeah. why people don't want to bring up expectations is because they might be afraid of confrontation as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. But his quote mm-hmm. that he says all the time is, confrontation brings clarity. Yes. Confrontation always yeah. gets this negative connotation yeah. to yeah. it, but sometimes confrontation is just bringing it up and talking yeah. it through. He, he rebranded them as clarifying conversations. Clarifying yeah. conversations. And I That's good. Sometimes I you that. have to like break those walls yeah. down for communication. And yeah. I know last week you guys talked about like mm-hmm. how you process differently and we process very differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm very like internal or like mm-hmm. personal and Alec is not. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. great. And I love it. Talk it out. <laughs> Talk it out. And, and understanding, okay, how can we create this safe space where I feel anxious right now, but you feel anxious if we don't talk about it? So can we take a break? Can, can we go on a drive? Can we go on a walk? Like something mm. that will fuel that communication to feel safe, even if the topic doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. good. Love that. That's really good. Yeah. Right. And All right, what uh, else? we had one more ground rule. Yes. Is that um, expectations should be fluid. Because yes. life changes. I mean, we don't have kids. We have a dog. 
and we have like 70 students. <laughs> and so like <laughs> we have to have different expectations of each other now than we did when we were dating or than we did when we were friends. And we'll have different expectations when we are parents. And I'm sure like you guys are grandparents now. You probably have different expectations of yourself and of your kids. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they drop change. everything for Shepherd. Um, guys, Pastor Ben is back. <laughs> Yay, Woo! Pastor Ben is Sorry, back. Sorry, shout out. Yay, he's um, off a of paternity leave. <laughs> he's back, yeah. So yeah. I just think if you understand your expectations should change in your different seasons, it sets you up for success yeah. of, okay, like we're going into something new. What do we need to set now? Yeah, that's so good. So good. So good. So, good. so what are and are not realistic expectations you found mm-hmm. after your first year of marriage? I think you started it off. Okay, yeah, we'll start with the realistic ones. Okay, so I think for me, realistic expectations are each of us doing our part and knowing ourselves as our own people. Um, mm. We are both very stubborn and strong headed <laughs> and uh, right. strong willed people. And mm. this weekend at EXO, I loved Dan Leanne said, um, marriage is the miracle where one plus one equals one. And mm. it's not. Mm half plus half equals one. It's not one plus one equals two. It's we are in holy covenant together, but I am my full self and you are your full self. And I look to Jesus to complete me, not to you to complete me. We complement each other and it's beautiful and it's amazing. And you fill in a lot of gaps that I have because I'm a mess of a person and vice versa. (laughs) And you cover my blind spots, but I have to be my whole self. I can't look to you for my identity. Um, I have to look to Christ for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I loved that illustration we were up there or not up there, down here for XL. It was incredible. And uh, Mm -hmm. I even get um, a realistic expectation is knowing how each other, like how to meet the other person's needs. It could be physically, it could be emotionally, uh, you know, in the context of marriage, sexually, sure, why not? But, you know, uh, the good resource for that is, you know, the five love languages by Gary Chapman. Uh, And I believe those languages are... Great uh, resource. Yeah, it really is. If If you you don't know, you should know and know that they will probably change throughout time. Yeah, the book is called Five Love Love Languages, languages. right? Yes, Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and I think those love languages, they're words of affirmation, Mm -hmm. physical touch, quality time, acts of service, and then giving gifts. Mm -hmm. And so... For me, I love quality time and I love words. Like if you can, you can tell me that I did a great job or like, man, you're doing awesome this week. And I'll ride that for the entire rest of the week. Like that'll make my whole day. Whereas Julia, she's a gifts person and she's a quality time person. So her joke. your time and your money. Yep, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) You know? (laughs) And then she just tells me good job and I'm good. (laughs) Yeah. But we had to, like, learn that. Because Absolutely. Because it was really hard in the beginning because you would always try to tell me nice things. And I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, you'd be like, words are cheap. <laughs> Where's the gifts? Where's the chocolate? Okay, words are not cheap. Words are not cheap. <laughs> she wouldn't say that, no. But a vanilla cream cold brew from Starbucks costs $5. Mm. So. <laughs> I learned. I did learn. Love language. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And, and it's hard it. when, like, what I receive is not what I na- what you receive. And so I had to learn how to give what you need. Yes, yes. Because I think our hearts are naturally inclined to give out what we want. So yeah. because I wanted to hear positive words of affirmation, I would always want to give words of like, so I'm always going around people, great job, man. You did such a good job on the worship set yeah. today. Or like when we're at Crave, I'm like, what's up? Oh, you killed your test. High five. All that kind of stuff. Whereas with Julia, I can be like, hey, good job. Nice. <laughs> She'd be like, that, that means nothing to me. But if yeah. I got her a coffee or if I, you know, spent time with her after sure. she's had a long week, absolutely. Yeah. You're the, meeting the need absolutely. that you yeah. have in each other. Yeah. It's yeah. so important. That's good. Yeah. So, yeah, realistic, unrealistic expectations. After we've been married for 30 years, I feel like we've learned a thing or two about those. But yep. I think the reality for me, the realistic, is you will disappoint me and I will disappoint you. And it's, it's grace. Mm-hmm. It's a work in progress to mm-hmm. just continue, continually working on that. Because I think when um, I was first married and we were first together, you were my knight in shining armor. And yeah. and um, and we had to learn this along the way. Yeah, is, we did. is you're human, I'm human, and we're growing together. So learn to um, learn how to forgive well, learn yeah, grace, grace well. The one of the quotes I love is marriage is two imperfect people who refuse to give up on yeah. each other. Mm. And that's really the reality. That really is. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, mm. I'd say for me on that is coming to realization after 30 years and knowing this throughout is that um, your spouse doesn't complete you. Yeah. Yeah. 
And a lot of people think that's the case, but you're only complete, like a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Right. Yeah. And I think um, only Jesus can do that. Mm-hmm. Now, right. now, your spouse can compliment you, yeah. but they can't complete you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you. They're with you, they're alongside of you. And, you know, in this, we all have expectations, but we shouldn't allow those to derail our relationships and uh, our marriages, that's for sure. Yeah. And I think as we're saying, you need to identify in your life, in every exchange, in every relationship, you need to identify realistic and unrealistic expectations because it will help you. It will help your marriage. It will help if you're engaged. It will help if you're dating. It will help just in your relationship with your friends that are around you. So thank you for watching our YouTube channel. I hope that you've been uplifted and encouraged. Hey, if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel to become a part of our ALC family and to get more amazing content. We hope to see you soon.